Hello and welcome back to my library. It's once again Steam Next Fest and I can't wait to jump straight in. Last time around I had an uneven 17 demos. Gross, disgusting, hate it. But this time I took great care to get an even 30, which is way too many. So let's just let's just get to it. Metal Hellsinger is a rhythm shooter similar to BPM bullets per minute if you know that game. In BPM, every single one of your actions is tied to the beat and can't be performed otherwise, which makes for a better rhythm experience but a worse shooter experience. Hellsinger is way more lenient in that regard and instead encourages good rhythm keeping by giving your shots more damage and adding vocals to the song if you can keep a high multiplier, similar like in uh, Devil May Cry 5. And the soundtrack slaps hard, with guest singers like the lead vocalists of System of a Down and Arch Enemy. This is a must play for metalheads. Normal people can also enjoy this game, because it does feel pretty good to play, although the guns could use a bit more oomph, if you know what I mean. One thing it does that was solely missing from BPM was changing rhythms. Every beat in BPM was the exact same BPM, not in this one. Only thing that I do want from BPM is weapons that fire on off beats as well. The dual pistols in this game would be great for that. Angerfoot is strange. Kind of fun, but mostly strange. It's a first person shooter, or maybe, maybe a first person kicker if you want. That reminded me of the general loop of Hotline Miami. Enemies die quickly and you do too, although usually not in one hit since you can't see what's behind the door. It's an extremely fast game where you kick open a door, hope the door itself kills at least someone, and clear the room, ideally picking up a gun in the process, which will make the next room easier. Clearing side objectives unlocks new shoes with unique abilities. The style and humor of this game is pretty crass and surely not for everyone. It's got a tentacle with a knife though, which is an A plus reference. I appear to have invented a knife wielding tentacle. Hold of the lamb. Oh, want more, give me more, please. This game's awesome. You play as the leader of the titular cult in a quest to defeat the old ones and return a different eldritch being back to power. The game is split between building your colony and going on roguelite dungeon crawls to gather resources and followers. The demo was really short, but I can absolutely see this gameplay loop getting very addicting. A definite contender. Alaskan trucks. <laughs> Melatonin is Rhythm Heaven meets the lo-fi beats to relax slash study to. I don't think there's more that needs to be said, the inspiration is obvious, especially with the remix at the end. This is good stuff, although it lacks a bit of the, nah, the pizzazz of actual Rhythm Heaven. Which is I think the point with the whole pastel sleepy aesthetic, it's definitely good, it's definitely a good game. Agent 64, Spies Never Die. Here's a game with someone that has played GoldenEye to death and back and can't stand playing the same missions anymore. So they made their own game. This is GoldenEye, somewhat modernized. It still feels like what I remember GoldenEye playing like. Except better, because it's not 5,000 years old. It looks like for difficulty, you can pick the number of objectives for each mission. CRT effect, I don't want politics in my game. Sweet Transit is open TTD, I think. I'm sure that someone that actually got past building their first bus line can tell me if this is true or not. Not uh, this one's not for me. I'm I'm too dumb for these kind of games. I realize I'm mostly comparing these demos to other games, but I really think drawing the link between them, especially when the inspiration seems obvious, is really helpful in trying to convey what a game feels like to play. Nitro Kid is like a mix of Slay the Spire and Into the Breach. So you got card based combat with a lot of potential for interesting combos and builds, like my jab build that I've got going in the footage here. But you also got movement, pushing enemies, getting pushed, or luring enemies into your flurry of jabs. This one's got potential and is really worth keeping an eye on. Renown is just mortal but early access and doesn't feel as good to play. The theme page promises kingdom building, which could be its saving grace, but other than that, not that nice. 
Destroy All Humans 2 Reprobed. The remake of the second Destroy All Humans game. It still promises the same sadistic, chaotic and hilarious mayhem that the original game and the first remake did. The first remake, by the way, is also on Game Pass if you want to try that one for cheap. If you like that one, you'll like this one too, there's not much else to say. Depersonalization is a weird one. It's a Chinese game, I think, with very broken English and is from far to near. And the endless story shows a helpless expression that you rarely see. He put and text to speech voiceover enabled by default. The game itself seems to be some kind of detective RPG where you're supposed to find clues surrounding whatever case your character is working on. But absolutely Every action requires a dice roll, which can easily fail and just stop you in your tracks. The broken English surely didn't help with deciphering clues, but I didn't feel like I fully understood what all my options were in this one. I've actually played Terra Nail in a previous Next Fest, and it's still good, but nothing has changed in like a year. I don't know if that means anything though, it could just be the same demo from before. It's a game in which you terraform a wasteland back into a lush and diverse ecosystem. You can build machines that clean earth, irrigate it, turn into various biomes to increase biodiversity, and by the end you clean up all the machinery and leave nature in a seemingly untouched state. It's really relaxing and sends a nice environmentalist message. I'm writing these as I play them, but I'm pretty sure Midnight Fight Express is already my favorite game out of all of these. It's a top-down brawler with a fighting style somewhat reminiscent of the Batman Arkham games, but with enough flair and possibilities for creative and free-flowing combos that it just feels unique and incredibly fun to play. Just look at how cool the combat looks. Man, the theme for this next fest seems to be games that are like other games. Either that, or I can't stop comparing shit after having played a million games in my life. Anyways, Gloomwood is a bit like Thief. It's an old school stealth game in a vaguely steampunky setting. You do get a variety of stock shooter guns, but ammo is scarce and enemies hit hard. So smart sneaking through the really well designed levels with plenty of ways to loop and distract enemies is recommended. And your melee weapon is a cane sword which is just the fucking coolest. This publisher has already released a bunch of excellent boomer shooters, so I'll take New Blood's name on it as a sign of quality. Roots of Pacha is a prehistoric Stardew Valley, except very slow, even slower than Stardew Valley itself, and not very intuitive to navigate, but it has a way to tame wild animals, which is kinda cool, but then you also enter the give gifts to gain relationship thing with them and there's already a ton of characters in the game so that feels like filler, I don't know. We're keeping up the prehistoric setting and get ready, I'm gonna compare Sapiens to something. Rimworld with the aesthetic of The Sims. I was ready to dislike Sapiens and I didn't play it very long either because it was kind of slow at the start, but I think it has potential. From what I could tell, it very much has the same basic loop as Rimworld, and seeing your sims, uh, I mean sapiens, be completely bewildered by branches has a certain charm that's got me intrigued. And you can build some crazy shit from, if I can, if I can interpret the screenshots correctly, on the Steam page, so maybe. Escape Academy is a love letter to escape rooms. If you've ever done an escape room, you'll know exactly what to expect with this game. The escapes in the demo have been pretty easy so far, but the introduction is thematically so cool that I can't help but already love it. At the start you enter a generic, kinda dirty escape room that's way too easy only for the lobby of the establishment to become the real escape room. That's some good stuff. The Last Worker is a narrative adventure game about the last human worker at Amazon. I mean, Jungle. 
Not jungle. Jungle. Set in a hyper-capitalist future dystopia, you're being recruited by an opposition force to fight this evil company from the inside. Look, Jeff Gazos. It's not quite my cup of tea. A bit slow for my taste, but the writing had a certain portal quality to it that might turn this into a really fun experience. Disterra. It's a uh, sci-fi rust. Except it runs like ass and I can't be bothered to play it long enough to figure out if there's actual building. Next. Goodbye World is a narrative game about two women fresh out of college trying and failing to make a living creating video games. In between each chapter you play one level of a cute little puzzle platformer on the beat up Game Boy of one of the characters. Which usually gets interrupted by the character's real life calling, trying to beat them down once again. I'm sure this is gonna hit home with a lot of creatives that ever try to make a living off their art. Keep an eye on this one. Frozen Flame looked cool from the screenshots and the art. Combat in the tutorial felt decent enough. A bit clunky, but flashy. Then I left the tutorial and I saw glowing resources to pick up and my heart sank. It's another survival crafting game. Once I saw the building system, it dawned on me. This is Valheim, but without the tight visual style and thick atmosphere. Maybe it'll be good enough to some more time in the oven? I don't know. Hold on. Check it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Here it comes. Trepang squared is like fear. This is a brutal, fast-paced shooter that's chaotic enough to even be disorienting. Especially because for some reason, every sound came from the opposite direction in my headphones. It probably won't come through in the recording, but in the footage you'll see me react to enemy noises and look in the wrong direction. Other than that, Trepang is hell fun. Fighting enemies with bullet time and invisibility gives a real sense of power. Grand Theft Gato, Vice Kitten. It's <laughs> meh. It's just Goat Simulator, but with cats and somehow less funny. What a Nyad looked promising. A beautiful, painterly game about a river spirit. You can reunite ducks with their ducklings and ha harass frogs. Whoa! I thought I was a goner. But that's kinda it. Maybe sing a flower into existence. I'm kind of missing some substance here. Gameplay is very simple and a narrative seems to be missing entirely. I don't know, maybe maybe that's just a demo. But this one really didn't grab me, despite how beautiful it is. In Potion Permit, you play as a chemist that travels to a small town to become their resident potion seller. Potion seller. You enter the wild to gather ingredients with your trusty hammer and sickle. And axe, I guess. Fight monsters and wild animals and take all those resources back to your cauldron. Brewing a potion is a light puzzle minigame that ends with a really satisfying animation. I like this one, it feels really relaxing to play. Ooh, we got a cool one here. Beneath Aressa is a cinematic Slay the Spire. It looks so cool, I'm totally here for it. It has a teamwork mechanic that gives you benefits as you upgrade your teamwork with your chosen companion. This one's gonna be really fun. Only thing I need now is explanations for the terms and symbols on the cards and for the game to not crash randomly. But it's too early to knock it for that. Alright, back to back winners here. Dome Keeper is a kind of tower defense game where you have to keep your dome from being destroyed by shadow creatures. In between waves you have a bit of time to mine for resources to upgrade your dome and maybe even find bigger upgrades themselves. This is a really addicting gameplay loop with a pretty high difficulty in resource and time management. I've always loved those mining flash games back in the day, so giving it a bigger purpose and urgency works amazingly well. Back Firewall underscore is a comedic adventure game set inside of a smartphone. You are the update assistant for the newest operating system update. The old OS, OS 9, isn't a fan of being replaced and after saving you from being deleted after the update is complete, you team up with them to crash the phone and postpone the update. 
This one's really creative, but the quality of it is going to hinge on the writing, I think. And the demo, it's good so far, and I'm curious to see what the full game has to offer. Stay focused now. Our exit is very soon. Moon Scars is a moody action platformer, seemingly inspired by Hollow Knight and maybe Salt and Sacrifice. Pretty good. It looks like there's plenty of upgrades to be got and some decent build variety. Combat feels meaty and satisfying. Yeah, it's a good game. But from my experience, I know that those kind of games don't click that well with me. We'll see. And last but not least, may maybe least. WrestleQuest is a wrestling RPG set in a toy world. A very strange theme they went with, having wrestler action figures interact with plushies and Lego figurines. Makes for a mix I'm not sure I'm that into. There's actual Macho Man Randy Savage in the game, that's kinda cool. Combat is straight out of Paper Mario and I can see this being a lot of fun. At this current time, it still needs some work. Even just for quality of life and trying not to crash. Oh boy. All right, that, that uh, those were 30 demos from NextFest. I really hope I get this edited down uh, in time before NextFest ends. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this. Here's the games I've wishlisted from all those demos. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, do the YouTube thing of like, like and subscribe and stuff, you know? And until next time, whenever that might be, bye bye.